now that we have the InDesign files created and some of the folders created and things are looking pretty good, we can begin to build our folio. And that's where we're going to take a step right now. So make sure you've got InDesign open and make sure that you can see the folio overlays in the folio builder panel. If you want to in CS6, you can come to digital publishing once again for that workspace and set that if you want to. Otherwise, you will find the panels under window. Click on the folio builder panel on the right and you will most likely, you won't see much in here in this panel when you first start this. You'll actually probably see some text or something that says, hey, you can sign in if you want to or something similar to that. Now, the reason why is because you haven't built any yet. Okay, that kind of makes sense, hopefully. We can build just about as many as we want. A folio, like I've already mentioned several times, is sort of like a testing app. It's on your way to building an app. A folio is a collection of InDesign files and all the content, and everything necessary to be able to be saved to an app, okay? A folio is your working app. So if we go in here, what we can do is we can create an app. All the apps you are working on are listed right here, and they are called, I'm going to call them folios because that's what, technically what they are. Now, what happens is when you create a folio, it's going to link to the InDesign files on your hard drive somewhere or whatever they, wherever they happen to be. So if you create a folio and later on you go to work on it, you better be able to find the InDesign files. So you want to put your InDesign files somewhere where you're not going to move them all the time or put them on an external disk or something where you might not have it attached. There are two types of folios that we can create or work with, or two ways, I guess you can say, to work with them. You can create offline folios and online folios. An offline folio is a folio that you can edit locally. And if you look right here, if I hover over this one, it says file status local. All of these are local. That means I created it. It pretty much all the files and everything lives on my hard drive. I can edit it at any time. If I want to share it with someone, I will upload it or make it a, um, a different type of folio. And we will get to that in just a little while. So to begin with, we're going to create what's called an offline folio so we can work with it. So to create our folio with your folio builder panel open, come down to the bottom. And there's a bunch of ways to do this. You'll see create new folio. You'll also see up here, you're going to be using this quite a bit. This little panel menu right here, you're going to see new folio. Either way, click new folio. It's going to open up this dialog box and we're going to see a lot of things that we're going to want to work with. So first and foremost is the folio name. And this is pretty important. Uh, it's something you're going to remember. Um, it's something we can change later on if we want to. But let's name it right now. So I'm going to call this something like Pinnacle. Makes something that makes sense to you, okay? Pinnacle Playground, maybe. All right. And if, if you have different versions of something, you can call it a versioning or something like that for folio name. This is for you to keep track of. Viewer version, if you click on the number right there, your number may actually be different than what you see here, depending on how much later you're watching these videos. But if you click on the viewer version, going to come up with this dialog box and you're going to see a menu pop up. If you haven't updated your software, all of your, uh, the DPS tools that is, then you may not see these versions or you may see newer ones if you're watching this later. I just updated. It's, um, what is it? It's January, end of January, 2013. And they just came out with viewer version 25. And what you want to do most of the time is you want to pick the latest viewer version. So the biggest number. That's going to give you the most bang. Usually it's going to make it better because they always improve these things. But you have to be careful because, for instance, right now I can't choose 25 because I can't test it anywhere. It, nothing's been updated yet. This just came out like two days ago. So you need to be careful with doing this. 24 is the absolute minimum I want to choose. Okay, now the reason why is it's better. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. We don't need to go into this. But I'll choose 24. I'll click OK. Now you got to be careful here. You can't change it to a lower version later on if you want to, okay? You have to rebuild the folio, so I'll click OK. Target device, as a um, as working a, with a single edition, we only have iPad to work with, so that's all we're going to figure. There's your size. Now, the pages you create in InDesign, in your InDesign files, must match this size exactly. It can't be 1024 by 767, otherwise it won't accept them. Now, you got to choose an orientation. Remember, we kept talking about dual orientation versus one locking orientation, that pinnacle I showed you, uh, the pinnacle app. If you want it to be dual orientation, you're going to choose that right now. So click on the one you want. If you want to lock it into an orientation, you're going to choose one of these. 
if you choose dual orientation, that means that you either have two versions of every InDesign file, vertical and horizontal, or you've got the alternate layouts inside of the InDesign file or a combination of the two. Now you're going to see right here, now you got to set that. It won't let you go without it, but you're going to see right here something called right edge binding. If you don't understand something, you can always click on the little information thing and it'll show you what it's talking about. It'll go right to left rather than left to right, and I tend not to do this. It's special purposes, special cases, you can always test it and see. Right down here, default format, it shows PDF for me because of the viewer version. This is for the format for, rather, the design content. All the static stuff, your design, your text, your images, things that aren't going to move, things that, that, that are not part of the what are called the overlays or the interactive content. You see, when, when you build an app, you technically have, let's say, the design content or the stuff underneath that gets flattened. Uh, gets flattened out into JPEG or PNG or whatever it decides. Basically pictures. This is what it used to do way back when. Or now we have PDF we can choose. And what that means is all your design content can be converted to PDF content, which means it'll look better in all the different um, iPad you know, uh, versions, if you will. So if you have retina display or non-retina display, it scales that content. And a PDF content can be scaled better. It looks better. But it can be a little bigger. depends on what you're doing. So so a lot of times I will choose PDF to get it to look the best on Retina and the regular uh, SD versions of iPad. I didn't choose JPEG, so I'm not going to mess with this. I can't anyway. And if you want to, you can add some cover previews. These are previews that will show up uh, when somebody's looking at the app itself, depending on where they look at it in the store, et cetera. And we can add these later if we want to, which I will. So I'll click OK. Now, if you want to add these, you can always just go up and click the folder and find the file and, you know, that kind of thing. And I'll, we'll talk about these a little bit later. So click OK. We've got our, our folio. It's pretty much set here. What it then does, it's kind of odd. This threw me when I first got in here. In the folio builder panel, it now says, oh, OK, well, here's your folio. Let's start to add articles. It immediately jumps in and says, let's add articles. But let's just take a quick tour of the folio builder panel. If you click back on the arrow right here to go back, here's the way it works. It lists every folio, which is eventually going to become an app, right here. If you want to work on one of them that you created, you can go in and double click on it. It then shows you all of the articles, mostly InDesign files. So for instance, if I go back to that pinnacle one that I created, double click on it, you'll see cover, TOC, main. These are all considered articles. For me, these are all InDesign files. They don't have to be necessarily. If I double click on, let's say, the cover, it then shows me the actual InDesign files. And if you see the tooltip, it'll say, oh, well, here's where it's actually located. So it's an InDesign file. Now, let me go back to mine, or the one we're working on. So I'll double click, get in there. And right now, there's nothing. So we need to add an article. Now, there's a lot of ways we can add articles. We can add articles that are open in InDesign. You can add articles by importing them. A lot of different things we can do. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to open a file. So let's go to File Open. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go to my desktop and do this. In your DPS Class 1 Start in your folio, in your cover, let's open up the cover that we were working on. So this is the one we created the two different, either for CS5 or 5.5, you created two different VNH files, or in CS6, you've got both layouts in there. So if you're in InDesign CS5 or 5.5, open up one, V or H. InDesign CS6, just open up the cover document. And we should see that we've got both in there. There we go. Now, come to the Folio Builder panel. This is the first article, quote unquote, we're going to add. So it's an InDesign file. Come down here, and you're going to see that we've got click to add article. Now, I'm going to move this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. You know what? I'm going to pull this out <laughs> right here. And we can see a little bit easier, and I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click on this, and you're going to see that we have two methods here. Now, I believe in, in I can't remember the versions. You guys, in InDesign CS5, even 5.5, you may not see this. I'm pretty sure you do, but you will see add open InDesign document or import article. Add open is it's going to take the InDesign file that you see out there and add it as an article to your folio. Import article is going to let you go pick a folder that the file's in and say, let's grab that InDesign file or files and import them, okay? Now, if you are in CS6, I know this is going to be a little nitpicky here, but, and you chose to use the um, alternate layouts, meaning you've got the 
horizontal and vertical in the same InDesign file. Currently, the only way you can add this as an article is to open the InDesign file, come right here and click on the little plus and choose Add Open InDesign Document. It's the only way you can do it right now in CS6. So you have five, five, five. If you've got cover underscore H or cover underscore V, you should be able to just open it and add it. So go ahead and click open an InDesign document. And it's going to say, all right, we're going to create a brand new article. Now each article can have different information about it. And there's even more that we're going to be able to change later. You've got things like a name. You've got what it's going to do with it, how it's going to compress it, et cetera. The article name is really important. This is something that you will see in the app. And if you go to make links, Let's say I want to link from text in one article to a completely different article. We will name the article. We'll say, go to this article name. So this needs to make sense. So let's just type in cover. Lowercase, uppercase, it's your call, okay? Keep it simple. Try not to put spaces and names if you can help it. Simple. Article format, it's going to choose what you chose for your default typically, which is PDF. I'm going to stick with that because I want it to look good. Otherwise, you guys, JPEG, ping can possibly be smaller in size, but it could look not as good on retina displays for the iPad. And you got to test these things, okay? You can also come to the information over here and just take a look at it and see what it says. Smooth scrolling. We're not going to attack this uh, quite yet. We're actually going to deal with this when we get to the, uh, in the second level. Smooth scrolling means that you can have a really tall InDesign page. It doesn't fit within 1024 or 768. And somebody could literally just kind of scroll through the page, scroll through the article, if it were, if you were. So smooth scrolling is something we can do. We don't want to do that right now, okay? Portrait layout, what it's doing, and this is for CS6 only, you will see this. It's going over to your pages panel, and I can't go over there right now, but it's going over to your pages panel and looking at the alternate layout name and saying, oh, for portrait, we want to use the vertical, and for landscape, we want to use the horizontal. It's just picking it up and doing it. Now, if you're an InDesign CS5 or 5.5, you, you won't see all this stuff. You'll probably just add the file after you enter the information here. Click OK. CS6, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and just look at it all, make sure it's there, add it. In InDesign CS6, it's going to grab the horizontal and the vertical and add it to the folio. You should see now cover in here, or whatever you named it. If I double click on it, go ahead. In Design CS6, you should see landscape and portrait. In Design CS5 and 5.5, you'll probably just see one of them, whichever one you had opened. In InDesign CS5 and 5.5, what you can now do is while you're in here, I know this is so bizarre, but while you're in here, you can go and open up cover underscore whatever one you didn't open. So if you open up the H, cover underscore horizontal, Go open the cover underscore vertical and have it showing out here. The opposite one is showing now. Then what you can do is come over here and click add article. And essentially what it's going to do is it's going to add the layout. It'll say something like add layout instead. Okay. So whoops, add layout. There you go. Add layout. It'll add it in there and you should have then have both of them there. We saved the step there uh, in CS6 because they're in both files and it just picked it up. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, I'm going to go back to articles. Now I can close up the cover file. This is linking to that InDesign file now. So as a matter of fact, in the Folio Builder panel, if you double click on the cover article, once again, we're just kind of going back and forth, double click on one of the layouts. It, it knows where the layout is. You, you'll see the tooltip there. So if you move the InDesign files, it's going to scream at you, where are they? InDesign CS6, we're going to open the one file, and it'll show you both. InDesign CS555, it'll open up the one V or H file. All right, I'm going to close that file up. Go back, we're going to add another article. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to add it using import article, different method. If you look out here on my desktop, you don't have to go out here, but you look out here in my files, you're going to see the TOC article has an H and a V. Just like I've been screaming about InDesign CS5 and 5.5, this is how we do it, right? Well, if we wanted to add both of these without having to go through what we just did, having to go through that process, here's what we could do. Back in InDesign, make sure that you are seeing your articles here, okay? Come down to the bottom or come up to the menu up there, click, and you should see Import Article. The other will be grayed out because there are no InDesign files open. If you don't see it down there or something's confusing, whatever, you can always come up here and choose Import Article. So choose Import Article going to say, okay, 
let's go find a folder with the InDesign files in it. Okay, you can or import one or a bunch. If you have a single folder with like six folders in it, you can pull them all in at one time if you want to do that. I've never been that brave, but you can. Now we're going to give it a name. We'll just call it TOC. Choose your format. I'm going to go with PDF. It can be a little bigger. It can be smaller depending on what it is, but it can look better. Okay. It says reduce file size, but not always. I'm not going to do smooth scrolling because all these pages are fitting within the iPad screen, 1024, 768. You don't need to worry about this stuff. Scrolling will mean that you can swipe as well. I don't want to do that. We don't need horizontal swipe only. If you select horizontal swipe, it's going to mean that, let's suppose you have an InDesign file with three pages. I showed you that if we went in and, let me actually show you again. We went into our article, or excuse me, into our, um, our uh, app. Let me open this pinnacle up. And let's suppose that we had, let me show you this again. Suppose that we had an InDesign file with a bunch of pages in it. Well, if we go in and we select horizontal swipe only, it's going to mean that if we swipe, it's going to swipe horizontally, not vertically. It's kind of interesting. You're not always going to want to do that. As a matter of fact, I rarely do it. You can test it out. Try it and see what happens. Anyway, come to location. Here's the folder where our InDesign files live. So click on location. Let me hide that. Click on location. I'm going to go out to my desktop, grab all my stuff, and I can see my things here. Class 1, start, my folio. This is what we've been working on. Select the folder with the article in it, and it's going to go find the H and the V files and pull it in. So I'll click open. There we go. That's it. It's not going to determine which is which. It, I mean, it's not going to show you which it determines. You just click OK. So click OK. Now what it's going to do is going to go look at both InDesign files and make sure that they're, they fit the orientation. If they don't fit, it's going to give you an error. It's going to say these aren't the right size or something. If you now double-click TOC, it'll show you both layouts. Double-click Landscape Layout, and it will open up just the H version of that one. Double-click Portrait, and you got the V version. There we go. So it, you get the Folio Builder, is, it's kind of an interesting animal because it... It's how you build, if I, why don't you go back here, go ahead and click a couple times back to the folio. It's how you build the app, meaning this is how you build the precursor to the app, the testing app, if you will. It's how it keeps track of everything. It's how you organize your, your articles and get everything ready to go. But it's not like, it's not moving your InDesign files. It's just linking to them essentially. Okay, so it's, it, to me, Folio Builder is in some ways and shapes and forms, kind of like creating a book in, in, in kind of a, it's an odd way, okay? <laughs> but for apps, all right? Okay, double-click on Pinnacle Playground there. We've got the cover. We've got the TOC. Now, we can always, if we decide we want these to be in a different order, we can always reorder them. As a matter of fact, the first one that you see here in the list, this one right here, let me go back over to the app. It's going to show up first on the left. That's what the users are first going to see. As we go to the right, which is what it almost always does, these are going to go down. So cover, TOC, main. In the app, it's going to be cover, TOC, main. So left to right, typically. Now, there are a lot of variation you can do here, but uh, that's what we'll do. Okay, we're going to add the last article. Um, I'm going to open it up because I'm in CS6. So I'll go out to my files. If you're in CS55 and you went in, you created this a different way, you can always add it by importing. But go ahead and open up the main article. CS6, you should see in there that it's got all the different layouts, two different layouts. Let's go ahead and add the open InDesign document. Don't forget, CS6, if you have alternate layouts, this is the only way you can do it right now. Call this main. It's going to pick up the layouts. We won't see this in CS5 or 5.5. Don't forget. Hopefully it, that's making sense by now. Click OK. And it should put it in. Now, it's going to go through and make sure all it's doing right now, really, is checking to make sure that there are no broken links. If it finds a broken link, if it finds something wrong, it is going to error out. You might see an error, and you may have to go back to the file, look at the links, see if anything's broken or missing, fix it, and then try again. Okay? And I'm not going to lie to you. You're probably going to have some broken links because you're pulling these files from me. So, Now, like I said, if we wanted to, we could reorder these by dragging. It would simply reorder them in the app itself when we're finished. Make sure it's covered TOC main. A couple last little things here. We are adding these. 
this is these are kind of these are simple articles because they're just InDesign files. We can also add articles that are HTML files. You can also go up here and choose right here, add article. This is really kind of bizarre. You can add an article that's blank. So I click add article. I don't do this. I'll just show this to you. Okay. And actually, you know what? It's going to add the article, the uh, InDesign file that's open. My apologies. Let me close this. With nothing open, if I come up here, you choose, you're going to see we have new import article, rename article, etc. It's going to try and grab whatever you have. Okay. We can import a blank InDesign file if we want to and put a content in there. We can do a lot of different things, HTML files, HTML pages, but that's down the road. Okay. All right. I think we're doing okay. Why don't you come back, click on the arrow, back to the folio itself. You can sort these by different, you know, when it's been published, you know, name, et cetera, if we want to. These are all the ones I've worked on. You probably only see the one. That's fine. If you want to create a new folio, you come down here and create it. If you want to add more articles, you do that. If you decide you want to delete one, you can delete it and you can rebuild it. It's your call if you screw up. So why don't you come to the menu out here? We're just going to do a couple little housekeeping things and then we're going to go and test the folio in the next video. Click on the menu out here. You'll see that we can do things like rename the folio here. So if you decide you don't want that folio name, you can always click rename, change it if you want, click OK. Go back to the menu out there and you'll see that we have folio properties. Choose that. This is what always blows me away. It's like, so we, I thought when I first started doing this way back when, I thought when we saw the dialogue, when we first made the folio that those were all the settings, right? Well, no, you're going to see here that we actually have another setting we can do right here, plus a repeat of some of the other ones. If you decide later on that you want to bump up to a version, a later version, you can always do it, but you cannot go back. You got to rebuild the folio if you want to do that. The publication name is important. This is what shows up essentially when you have the app. So if we call this something like Pinnacle PG, and I'll explain that later, don't worry. Size, all done. Pro covers, if we want to add covers, we can do this later on, which we probably will. But for right now, I'll just forego it. Click OK. Just a few properties we set. But like I said, that publication name is something that we will see later on. Don't worry, you can always change it. Double click on the folio name, we dive back into it, and we're going to see all the articles. Click on cover, select it once. There you go. Come to the menu out here, and you're going to see a bunch of things, okay? We've got rename article. If you want to rename it, same thing. I'm not going to show you that. You can just rename it there. Be careful of doing this. If you've already created links, which we're going to do next in the next series of videos next week, you got to be careful about renaming it, okay? Because links can depend on the name. You can delete it. You can relink if you decide that, hey, I don't want that InDesign file. So it, it points, as a matter of fact, if I hover over this and double click and then look at the tooltip, this is where it thinks the files are. Suppose I want, don't want to use that. I want another version. Instead of deleting it and starting over, you can always come up here and choose relink. It's going to ask you for a new InDesign file for portrait and landscape. So you just choose either one file for InDesign CS6 or two uh, for InDesign CS5 or 5.5. All right. Here's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. <laughs> Long-winded. Sorry. Article properties. So click on cover, come to the menu, choose article properties. This is where some of the rubber meets the road, okay? This is stuff that is directly going to show up in the app if somebody decides to see it. We've got title, byline, kicker, description. You can tell it to do different things, table of contents for you, etc. Let me show you where these are, title, byline, and kicker. I'm going to go back over to the app. And if, if somebody is just, let me just go look at the app. If somebody's just looking at the app, they're like, oh, cool, I'm going to go swipey, go through, etc., they're not going to see a lot of this type, title, etc. If they click in the middle out here somewhere and they look at the, you're going to see the UI out there, the bars on top and bottom. Whoops. There's a table of contents that I can click on, an icon right up there. This will show a TOC. This table of contents is pretty much automatically generated. It takes a thumbnail, a picture, etc. And you're going to see right here some information. So you've got this right here and this and this and this, etc. It'll also show you if the file or if that particular article has interactive content like video, audio, etc. This is the information we're thinking about. So you're going to see right here that we've got like, let me see, table of contents right here. That's the title. 
So table of contents, you're gonna see the byline, whoops, byline and kicker. And I, to be honest, I always forget what these are. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, instead of guessing, you guys, I'm gonna go to the one I already created. Just watch for a second, I'll just show you. One I already created. Okay, so for the cover, the byline kicker, you're gonna see that this is the kicker, this is the title. The byline doesn't show up in the table of contents. The byline actually shows up, let me show you. The byline actually shows up when you do this zoom out. You're gonna see, there's the title, there's the description right there, and right there, Pinnacle, I even misspelled it, I just corrected it. There's the, uh, the, the um, Pinnacle Playgrounds Inc. Okay, there's the title, my bad. There's the title right there, table of contents, Look at the cover. Really, Brian? Sorry, guys. Sorry. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, what's going on? So, title, table of contents, right there. Okay. Byline, Pinnacle Playgrounds, Inc., right below it. The kicker would show above it. Okay, that would actually show above it, above the title, rather. Description, table of contents for the app shows up right to the right here. So, all this information can be useful if you want to describe this content. I see that a lot of people don't really put a lot of thought into the bylines, the kickers, and descriptions. They just leave them. Maybe they just put a title in there, that kind of thing, for the table of contents. It's your call. Okay, all this information is something that could be useful to people. Let me go back to ours. Go to the cover like we, you all should be here. Article properties. All right, title. Let's just simply call this pinnacle cover. This is simple. I mean, we don't have to go crazy with this. Byline, if you want a little information about it too, you can see sets the author. Byline appears in Folio Navigation. So you can say, put your name in there, I don't care. Um, kicker, you can see right here, section heading. So if you want to, um, it's in the table of contents. Could be a section if you want to. So, you know, but we don't need to do this. Description, we can set a description if we want to. And the description, like I already showed you, shows up in the Folio Navigation. You can type in a description if you really want to. We don't have to. Advertisement. This can be really important if this is actually a, an article that is just an advertisement. You'll see this in a lot of um, a lot of these apps that are created. You can tell it that it's an advertisement because what it'll do is a couple different things. It'll hide it from the table of contents and a couple other things as well. If it's not an ad, leave it alone. Hide from table of contents will not show it. Let me go back. Will not show it in the actual table of contents. So if I click on the table of contents up here, it won't show it listed here. So like maybe you don't want an ad listed there. You can say hide it from the table of contents. Smooth scrolling, we don't need to worry about. Like I said, that's a, a more advanced feature. And the table of contents preview, it already picked it up. You can always, if you want to, create your own. It's a JPEG or ping right there, 70 by 70 pixel size. And there it is. All right, click OK. Doesn't look any different. You can go to each one if you want to and set this information. And there we go. Okay, so we've got the folio created. I can see all of my different files. Don't forget, you can always go out and take a look at inf information. There's a lot of stuff going on in the menu out there. Let's go back to the folio itself. You should see right back here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it for a test drive. So we're going to go out and show you how to test the folio.